Okay, my family, I pray that the Holy Spirit of God would lead us, teach us, and guide us so that we would have his truth. The Lord has led me to do some teachings on spiritual warfare because the battle is in our mind. Spiritual warfare consists of struggling against evil forces that are in our mind. The Bible in his word is clear that the battle is not f fought physically, but it's a spiritual one. Ephesians 6 and 12 tells us, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The principalities, powers, and rulers st all stem from Satan's kingdom. But Satan is not omnipresent. He cannot be everywhere at once. He cannot see everything at once. He works through his... his army he has demon spirits that he works through there are two kinds of spiritual warfare there's offensive and defensive in defensive spiritual warfare the demonic spirits are launched as fiery darts Ephesians 6.16 tells us Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. These fiery darts come in three forms, temptations, deceptions, and accusations. The first one, spiritual warfare, temptations. In the Garden of Eden, the adversary cannot wreak havoc on Eve because he had no rights to do so. So he went about trying to get her to give him those rights. He tempted her to sin because sin gives the devil a foothold, a foothold in our lives. Ephesians 4 tells us that we need to put off our old sinful nature, take off the old man and put on the new. It tells us that we can give the devil a foothold in our lives through sin need to give place to the devil. Now the devil tempted Eve in the garden because he had no place in Eve's life, but he wanted to. So when Satan wants more legal grounds in our lives, he tempts us. It's his way of getting us to fall and giving him a foothold into our lives. The moment we fail in sin, it is important to quickly turn from these sins and repent so that we can be forgiven and the legal ground for him to move in our lives can be removed. Spiritual warfare, dart number two, is deception. Our adversary... torments many of our the brethren. Countless believers are living in defeat because they have been deceived. The enemy has deceived them and caused them to believe and live a lie. If we allow deceptions to take hold, strongholds can then be formed in our minds. Strongholds are incorrect thinking patterns based on falsehoods. Demonic spirits love to use these strongholds to their advantage against a true child of God. Strongholds have tremendous power to affect our feelings and emotions. Many blood-bought children of God Almighty feel guilt-ridden and worthless because they don't see themselves the way they ought to. Many, many of our brethren feel unloved and not good enough to be accepted by God. Their perception of Him has been damaged and it causes them to see him as a distant and cruel taskmaster instead of a close and loving father who longs and deeply desires to have an intimate loving relationship with his children. In 2 Corinthians 11 and 3 it tells us, But I fear lest by any means as a serpent beguiled 
Eve through his subtlety. So your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Spiritual Warfare Dart 3 is Accusations. Our adversary is known as the accuser of the brethren. Not the accuser of the sinners of the world, but the children of God. He could care less about badgering those who are already in his kingdom, but he loves to pick on our brethren, the children of God. Revelations 12 and 10 tells us that he is the accuser of our brethren. He accuses us by reminding us of our past sins and failures. If we listen to his accusations against us, we will begin to meditate on our past. And it isn't long before we begin to feel guilt-ridden and see ourselves as failures, both of which has been dealt with on the cross. Has not the blood of our risen King and Savior Jesus Christ washed away our sin? Then we ought to not be thinking about it anymore. Satan loves to take a child of the Almighty God who's been washed clean in the blood of Jesus Christ without spot nor blemish and make them feel dirty, worthless, and see themselves as only a failure. If we pay too much attention to the devil's accusations, they too can form strongholds in our mind and they mean to be torn back down so that we can experience true freedom that surrendering our lives to Jesus Christ has given us. When we surrender fully to Jesus Christ, and his will be done in his perfect timing. He takes, he removes from us all this bondage that we were carrying, for we were not meant to be made to be pack animals, carrying all the burdens of the world on our shoulders, but we were created to have a relationship with God and to walk with him in the garden. He wants us to spend time with him. And he hears what you are saying to him in those times. He is there. This has been part one of a spiritual warfare series which I'm being led to do. And I will continue as the days go by. And I pray to God that each and every one of you is doing well. I pray that Father God in heaven would place his holy fire hedge of protection round about each and every one of you on all sides, far above you and far below you, including your family. I pray for my brethren, I pray for my loved ones, I pray for my relatives, and I pray for the lost who cannot pray for themselves. I pray that he would cover us all with his holy fire hedge of protection that none may cross. I pray that he would cover our homes and our vehicles, our places of work and worship, our pets and provisions, our children, their schools, and their activities. I pray that he would protect us from all electronics we encounter throughout the day. And I pray that he would hide us from our enemies and scramble their frequencies. I pray that he would wash us clean with the blood of Christ Jesus and remember our sins no more. And I pray that this day he would lead each and every one of us so others might see his light of mercy, grace, loving, and forgiveness shine through us. I pray his will be done in his perfect timing. And I give glory to God in the highest for he alone is worthy of praise. I pray for all of you who are in need that he would show you this day that his arm is not too short to reach you in your time of need. I give glory to God in the highest. Amen and amen.